Hello and welcome to the final First Violin tutorial of this virtual Benedetti Sessions. It's been an absolute privilege to be working with you and again let me just say how wonderful it is to have seen all your videos coming through. I was inspired uh, for this tutorial um, by one of the questions that came up yesterday which was about posture and how to adopt the best posture to play and so I thought I might just take you through a few little ideas uh, today um, so that you can better think about how you might want to use your body as a violin player. So as I mentioned in the section on yesterday when, when we think about posture for a violinist it's really important that we think about the whole body and everything being free. So I thought I would explore what I did yesterday in a little bit more detail so that you can really see what I'm trying to get at. And I have a, a glamorous assistant on camera, so uh, if you just bear with us while we try and find the bits of the body that I'm talking about each time, that would be great. So I mentioned first that I wanted you to feel really good about how your feet are on the floor. So now if we focus on my feet here, what I wanted you to do is to rock from your toes to your heels, a bit like that, just feeling where the weight of your body is over your feet and I'm going to show you this way as well so just a little rocking and what I want you to think about is where are your ankles and it's really interesting that your heels are really a long way behind where your ankle bones are so I just want you to put that thought in your mind as you rock and I also mentioned yesterday that when I play, sometimes my left foot is very slightly in front of my right, but that's uh, something that can be anyone's taste. So perhaps you might want to keep your feet uh, parallel, but underneath where your shoulders are and just rock. Now I'm going to turn around again. And the next thing is just to make sure that your knees, your knees are not locked. And by locked, I mean braced, stiff. So if I show you what a, a locked knee looks like, and what I'm looking for is just a little bit of, a little bit of give in the knees, like a, a suspension in your car as you go over, as you go over bumps. The wheels on the car need to make sure it's not a, an uncomfortable experience for everything above it. So that's your knees. So I'm going to turn around again and just show you your knees. Then the next bit up is. Are you able just to feel really easy in your hip area? So again, everything should feel like it can move. It doesn't have to move, but it feels it needs to feel like it should move, should be able to move. And then a little bit higher up, how does your back feel? And when you're standing, your shoulders at the back should feel open. And I'm just going to turn around, so not like this. And not like this, but kind of neutral and easy, and that you can lift your arms easily in any direction you want to go. And now I'm already doing one of Nikki's favourite warm-up exercises, which is the kind of bounce. So you get yourself into the place where you're pretending to play the violin, and you're just kind of bouncing into that lovely place. So that's another thing, and just make sure that your feet are still connected to the ground, and your ankles are still feeling free and in front of your heels and your knees are still feeling good and then your hips are still feeling free and then you've got that lo lovely easy shoulder with an open back and that you've got that bounce in your body where your pretend violin can feel really comfortable and then the last thing I want to talk to you about is your head now there are really uh, qualified people who can talk to you about this much more uh, scientifically and better than me, especially those who deal with the Alexander technique. And actually what I want you to think about, and I mentioned this yesterday, is that your head is like uh, an egg in an egg cup. So there's the egg cup, and can your head just feel like it's easy to move around? And again, without doing anything jerky, just is it free? And the reason why it needs to be free is because your head is incredibly heavy. It's kilograms of weight and it needs to be able to balance and, uh, and move without causing lots of t 
time in a particularly fixed area where your neck and shoulders and back will have to compensate for it too much. So can your head be free because it's so heavy it needs to be able to be supported everywhere? So now that I've shown you what I would like you to think about without the violin, I thought it might be a good idea just to repeat that with the instrument. So I'm standing really evenly, I've got a rock with my feet, my ankles are feeling free, and I'm aware of kind of where my ankles are, which are actually much further forward than you might think. Uh, the heel is the thing that's really far back and the ankles are quite far forward. My knees are feeling uh, elastic or easy, bouncy, but without being too bent or too straight. My hips are feeling free. And importantly, um, could you also just try to make yourself be aware of whether you, are, you have a tension in your um, lower back? So can everything feel free there too? Upper back nice and open, and then as Nikki does, down and ready to bounce and play. And can you notice where your head is so that it can just kind of nod easily down onto your chin rest? Try not to yank your head that way uh, in order to put your head down onto the chin rest. Just try and keep it as natural and as close to the centre as feels easy. And everything can stay, stay free. So now, uh, when violinists are practicing or performing or whatever, sometimes we practice standing up, sometimes we perform standing up, or if we're playing in an orchestra, we often play sitting down. And that can have a real uh, difference, a real change on the way we use our posture, unless we're really careful. So what I want to do is just show you a little something that I think about uh, when I'm standing and when I'm sitting and, and, and how to make it still just as free. So the basic thing to think about is that when you are sitting, you should feel just as free as when you are standing. Um, so as you sit down, identify where your chair is. And for this, you'll need a chair if you want to practice it. So you can go and find one. Here is your chair. Just check that you're easily in, in front of it and then just sit down so that the, the thing that you're aware of are the two bones they're called your sitting bones, um, you can actually feel them on the chair. So just in the middle of your each buttock, there's a bone that you'll be able to feel, and that's called your sitting bone, and you actually want to be able to just rock gently over those two bones. And that's what you're looking for. Now, I'm going to turn to the side, I'm going to show you something about your back that you should try to avoid. So, I'm turning this way. Often, Violinists will try and keep a straight back and it looks a bit like this. That's not particularly healthy. So what we want is just that rocking to feel and your back to feel easy, not hunched over, not too far like that, but just easy. And still over your sitting bones and turn around again. And often what I do with uh, sections, first violin sections, for example, in an orchestra that I'm coaching, I would ask them to stand up and sit down and try and make it as though it's exactly the same. So I would, I would get the section to stand up and the important thing is that they can just do it like this rather than trying to change the, where they put their feet. So I'm up and now I'm down and now I'm up and now I'm down and my contact with the floor is still the same. And that's really important. So what I need you to ask yourselves is, can you feel your sitting bones? And then if somebody were to take the chair away from you, as if by magic, if your chair disappeared, would you be able just to stand up? Because that is what kind of what we're after. It's that feeling of chair gone, oh, I'll just stand up, no problem. The last thing I'm going to show you really blows my mind every time I do it myself and every time I teach it. It was shown to me by the fantastic violinist Gabor Takash, who was the first violin in the Takash String Quartet. And he's a brilliant musician and now a brilliant conductor. And when he was teaching me the violin, he got me to connect to the floor in a very uh, weird, let's say bonkers way. And it, this is why it blows my mind. As I was playing, he got me to think 
about the sound quality, the depth of sound I was making. So with a free body. And then he asked me to do the same sort of thing, but to sink down to the ground while I was playing. Now, I want you, if you're going to try this, to promise that you're going to be really careful. We don't want any dropped violins or bows, and you've just got to really focus on being balanced and strong at all times. So I really think it's worth experimenting with this, but please, please be careful with yourselves and with your instruments. And now I'm going to show you what Gabor Takash taught me. So here I go. He asked me to sink down while I was playing. So just a few notes here. to see is that uh, my glamorous assistant who's filming uh, for me today is smiling because I know that she can hear what I can hear and also what I can feel which is that my sound quality and my sound is bigger uh, just from being this connected to the floor and as you sink down in order to stay connected to the floor you've got to be so well balanced down here that the connection then stays with you when you stand up and you're able to connect your sound through the floor and through your whole body that much better. Do try it, it's crazy. Please be careful. Make sure you're well balanced as you do it. Make sure if you're not sure about how to do it, then just make sure you're going to be careful. We don't want any broken instruments. But if you can get yourself to, to practice that movement, you'll be amazed at the results. I guarantee you will hear your sound increase in volume and you'll feel so much easier when you stand up. Thank you so much. It has been a privilege to be your tutor for the last three weeks, and I've had such a good time seeing all the work that you've done come to fruition. Uh, I really hope to see some of you, or all of you again, sometime in the near future, and hopefully in person. And in the meantime, bye, good luck, and see you soon.